We've entered into a period of time when our problem is not so much a lack of information, but too much information, a fire hose of data that you've got to grapple with. And that poses different problems than too little information because, you know, you can be overwhelmed with what's out there and you've got to figure out a way of filtering all of this so that you can focus on things that are most relevant. And honestly, one of the best ways of doing that is not to start with the information that you have, which is our natural instinct. We tend to approach these analytic problems by saying to ourselves, let me look at my evidence. And then I'm gonna come up with some possible explanations for what I'm seeing. Well, when you approach things that way, you're basically inviting confirmation bias. You're making it most likely that you're gonna to start to zero in on things that you expect to see. And there's gonna be a lot of what you expect to see. But what you're gonna miss in doing that are potentially pieces of data that you don't expect, that you should be looking at, that are actually contradictory to what you expect. So how do you mitigate that tendency amid all this information? You don't start with the data, you start with your imagination. You start by generating hypotheses, come up with some possible explanations, and then ask yourself, what would I need to see to prove a particular explanation, any of these that are on my list? Once I've done that, I'm gonna to put together a methodology. How do I come to a high confidence conclusion in all of this? And only then do I go look at the data. And I know at that point, what kind of things I should be looking for that would be diagnostic evidence for certain hypotheses that I've generated. And I'll also look for evidence that disconfirms. I'm gonna to try to disprove my hypotheses and start crossing them off the list. That kind of approach I think can be very fruitful when you're dealing with information gluts, as oftentimes mm. we are. Mm. It reminds me a lot of what Kahneman and Tversky made famous through understanding the heuristics that we apply every day, these mental models and shortcuts. And, it, and once we understand those, we can really start to understand where our blind spots are. And we may be seeing what's easy to believe and missing some of what is really significant because of those biases. Now, I know you've commented recently on artificial intelligence and the impact that that might have on cyber security and have said that it's probably going to be the biggest security trend in 2020. Can you just add some color and context onto that and how you see it playing out in both attack and defense? When it comes to attack, I think artificial intelligence is becoming an increasingly powerful tool and one that can play upon these biases that we all have, the tendencies to see what we expect to see. On the defense side as well, I think artificial intelligence can be a very powerful tool for identifying breaches, for detecting anomalies. So many attacks that are going on so fast in such volume it's impossible for individuals to sort through all of that. You have to rely on automation and artificial intelligence is a very powerful way of dealing with that. And so one of the things I think is a challenge for all of us is in employing these systems to apply those very same analytic principles to their creation and their use so that we're aware of the ways these things can fool us and we take steps to mitigate all of that. So this is a rapidly evolving field and it's gonna be pretty hard to keep pace with all of this as artificial intelligence improves over time.